So how even the worst of the offenders, worst of the offenders, what are they? They are people who just have led a life of chronic, chronic baddies, okay? They have just been bad and engaged in adharmic actions throughout. And then, so what about them? Even they, when they repent properly and... Uh, take to a life of dharma, they too are liberated with the grace of Bhagavan. Grace of Bhagavan is not something that is dispensed selectively. Grace is something tapped into. And you tap it with your karma, your prayer, your attitude. That is what we saw. And then few more verses to round off the last chapter, the, the ninth chapter. Then the 32nd verse. Now let me say, it is uh, right at the outset, it is a um, controversial verse and such verses in the Bhagavad Gita and elsewhere, uh, what should I say, could give Vedanta teachers sleepless nights were it not for Pujya Swamiji. <laughs> Thank God for Pujya Swamiji again and again who has given a very different take and a brilliant take on this verse. So what is this verse? Let us chant and then let us look at it in depth. Maam hi parthavya paashritya Maam hi parthavya paashritya Yetisyu papa yonayaha Yetisyu papa yonayaha Striyo vaishyastatha shudraha Deviyanti parangatim. Deviyanti parangatim. Then there is a uh, there is a way in which Adi Shankara uh, talks about this verse, and perhaps this is the only instance in in every which way we have seen where Pujya Swamiji differs radically from Adi Shankara. Everywhere else he goes along with Adi Shankara and uh, only in this verse because we can, because of the grammar, we can do this. So what is the translation of this verse? 
as Adi Shankara would translate and as he has taken this verse, it is Ma He Partha O Arjuna Maam Hi Vyapashritya taking recourse to me, uh, connecting with me, being with me, taking refuge in me. Ye api syuhu, whoever is there, who are what? Papa yonayaha. Papa yonayaha means people who are born in difficult yonis. Yonis means the start of their life itself is very difficult and their life is full of difficulty. So then Papa yonayaha and then uh, who, uh, and then Adi Shankara takes what comes next as the examples of Papa Yonaya, uh, Striya, Striya means what? Women. Vaishyaha, Vaishyaha means? Traders. And then Shudraha, the, the Paricharakahas, people who serve. They are, uh, Adi Shankara takes them to be examples of Papa Yonaya. They api, they also, if they take refuge in me, they also get moksha. This seems like an underhanded compliment. <laughs> you know, they also get moksha. <laughs> what is this? You know, and Puja Swamiji, right from the start, pointed out to something here, which is staring at us in the face. This is grammatical, okay? So he makes, he says there is a reason why there is a period after Papa Yonaya. What do we see after Papa Yonaya? Full stop. Purna Viramaha. Okay? Uh, denoting a break. So he says, Papa Yonaya Maam Abhyavyapashritya Param Gatim Yanti. One sentence. So the people born under difficult circumstances and then we'll see who they are. They all taking recourse to me gain moksha. They gain paragatim means shreyas. They all get shreyas and they gain moksha. Okay, whoever these papa yonis are, people who are born to, let's say, um, people who are born to parents who are given to criminality, such such uh, difficult uh, things in life. We'll we'll look at some examples. Then full stop. Then. The next set of people, Striyaha, Vaishyaha, Tatha, Shudraha, Tepi, Yamti Parangatim. So the, there is no uh, linkage uh, which Pujya Swamiji uh, Swami is very, very clear about. There is no linkage between the word Papa Yoni and Stri, between the word Papa Yoni and Vaishya, between the word Papa Yoni and Shudra. This is the difference. And naturally we want this second interpretation because the first interpretation is a dated interpretation. It is a cultural interpretation coming from Adi Shankara's time. Why did he interpret it that way? He interpreted it that way primarily because in those days uh, there was taboos against women studying the Veda. Taboos were there. The religion had become extremely patriarchal and then women were not allowed to study the Veda, Maitreyi, Gargi, etc. notwithstanding. So Labha, so many examples are there. And there are 27 rishis, women rishis that uh, whose names are uh, chanted regularly and who are credited with, uh, who are credited with uh, uh, channeling some of the Veda mantras. So many are there. But still, uh, the articulation of the Hindu dharma had become much more rigid, patriarchal and uh, strict by the time Adi Shankara came around. We find him uh, treading a very conservative line even with regard to certain other things in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. In the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, there is a uh, section where it says if you want, athayadiya ichet, if somebody desires, duhita uh, me pandita syat, that my daughter, it doesn't say son, it says my daughter, that duhita me, my daughter should become a pandita, should become a scholar, really learn it. And then what does it say? It gives a little recipe. 
tilaudanam pajaitva ashniyatam so may the parents eat uh, sesame seeds cooked with rice or something like that having cooked the sesame seeds with rice eat that who knows maybe it's an ancient recipe to have brilliant daughters <laughs> maybe there were some other things there and then writing about this the commentary adi shankara says uh, uh, duhitaya panditvam the uh, scholarly attitude or the scholarship of the daughter grihakarya vishaye eva must be understood it is grahyam it grahyam means it must be understood as being only confined to or limited to home is- issues like running the home she is brilliant but that was uh, that was adi shankara's interpretation why because in his time the the the, the tradition had very much rigidified that's why the parampara is ever live and in the hands of pujya swami ji it, it uh, got this new what should i say airing out and so no longer is a birth of a woman or a birth of a vaishya or a birth in a vaishya household or something like that seen as papa yoni papa yoni means difficult life very difficult life like that of prahlada difficult life he had a monster for the father who was a narcissistic egomaniac and who wanted uh, the whole world to say om hiranyaya namaha his name was hiranyakashipu and prahlada said you are my father all right no problem but you are not god and what did he say om narayanaya namaha om namo narayanaya no say hiranyaya he cajoled him beat him frightened him no narayana look how much difficulty a five year old child had to go go through just because he was born to asuras that's an example of papa yoni and then other examples of papa yoni is you know parents are in prison or they have been recently released from prison it is very difficult for the child to even know what dharma is at that young age there is not much of a thing going on there is not much discrimination it has to be taught and then what other example of papa yoni uh, uh, you know like valmiki's children before of course he had this change of heart so like this and then papa yoni uh, uh, generally is used for animals so another thing we have to know because they cannot express their sorrow if you are mistreating a dog it may squeal it may howl but it doesn't have the uh, freedom to free itself from your clutches it is programmed to be loyal to you even if somebody abuses it it will shake its tail and go back to them so dogs they cannot express uh, what they are feeling and dogs cats you know and uh, what is that uh, animals that are normally hunted down for sport animals that are eaten papa yoni because poor things for no fault of their own just because of some karma they are eaten up and then what else so animals that are hunted down animals that are mistreated beasts of burden as they they are called like oxen donkeys horses they have to carry things they don't have a freedom they are already yoked to another horse which is yoked to a chariot what are they going to do this is all example of papa yoni and so the and then gajendra is another example so gajendra was an elephant crocodile came and caught his leg pulling him down almost and then he was in the water he was drinking water and playing in the water and the crocodile came and then in that same lake where he was being pulled under he saw a bunch of lotuses with his trunk he plucked the lotus and offered it to mahavishnu saying vishnu where are you and he was saved he got moksha that is how the thing is so this is this is the discussion on papa yonaya then we have to take the instance of women vaishya shudra separately uh, first is women and uh, why why does it make an exception that women also will gain this because precisely in those days women were tabooed from studying the veda 
even the most conservative commentator who was manu he was actually in defense yeah, of women getting munji what is munji thread ceremony striyam you know maunji strinam maunji karanam ishyate he wrote that women should be ordained and made to study the veda uh, but at some point it uh, went out of favor and then uh, women stopped receiving the upanayanam the ritual of being taken to the veda and studied so there is no exposure there is no exposure there is not you know there is a, a taboo in studying sanskrit there is taboo in speaking sanskrit because if you look at the plays of bhasa and kalidasa the women speak prakrit a kind of a what is that called uh, everyday kind of a sanskrit everyday uh, dialect of sanskrit so with the, all the women characters the female characters speak that and uh, except i think in one place yes in one place but that's because she is a swami so there is a swami in one of the uh, one of bhasa's plays and then she talks about and because they are taking uh, swapna vasavadatta is the name of the play and there a king's retinue goes to take uh, shelter in an ashram and then in that ashram there is a yogini a swamini whoever it is and then she uh, so she talks in sanskrit because probably she is allowed to talk she is teaching it or whatever it was but the rest of the time women don't speak sanskrit so this being the case one might wonder how will women study the upanishad that is why it is difficult it is mentioned that if they take refuge in me they too are free they also have no problem being freed then the second one is traders whose whose jobs are very busy and who are going from place to place all the time even the modern traders are very busy they are the backbone of the society and they are always busy and also the orientation becomes much more as we are seeing in the kathopanishad outward outwardly oriented they are all outwardly oriented they are not inwardly oriented because they are outwardly oriented what happens that there is not uh, enough impetus to uh, look around in their uh, in their circumstances to go within that is one example and then shudraha means the sevak class there also there is a big discussion in the brahma sutra there is apashuda ashudra adhikaranam a chapter on whether shudras can gain moksha or not and the answer of course is a resounding yes because moksha does the, and this is the purport of this verse the gain of moksha does not depend on gender does not depend on varna does not depend on ashrama does not depend on uh, oh, you know what is the circumstances of your birth or what all you did what all anybody did till one came to this particular place what did you do it doesn't depend on that what does it depend on adhikaritvam yeah then only you get knowledge it go it depends on adhikaritvam so if you are an adhikari that's enough what and this is what is iterated in the manisha panchakam also um, uh, written by adi shankara and what does he say what is the refrain in that चांडालोस्तु सतुद्विजोस्तु गुरु एषा मनीषा मम मनीषा मीन्स दिस इज मै विजम वाट इज मै विजम वेदर द पर्सन बी अ फ्यूनरल ग्रउंड्स कीपर कंसिडर्ड टू बी इन आस्पिशियस इंप्योर वॉट एवर इट इज एंड देन और दे कुड बी अ द्विजा द्विजा वी हेव टू बी केयरफुल अ बर्ड इज ऑलसो द्विजा वाय first anda one one birth and from the anda it break cracks and comes out that's it this thing yeah two births vija sometimes is referred to pakshina but here it is brahmana because the second birth is given by the thread ceremony it is seen as a rebirth and so chandalostu satudvijostu let the let the person let this guru be a chandala let the person be a chandala or a brahmana whoever it is 
सह गुरु एषा मनीषा मम और सह मम गुरु एषा मनीषा दिस वे ऑल्सो यू टू हेल्प दैट पर्सन इज माई गुरु और दैट पर्सन इज डेफिनेटली अ गुरु दिस इज माई विजडम सो हियर द परपोर्ट ऑफ दिस वर्स इज दैट नो मैटर वॉट योर रैंकिंग इन सोसाइटी नो मैटर वॉट वन इज doesn't matter as long as you have the adhikaritvam and mixed with shraddha bhakti you will gain what moksha and then next one kim punah prap kim punar brahmana punya ha kim punar brahmana punya ha bhakta rajarshayas tatha नित्यमसुखम लोकम अनित्यमसुखम लोकम इमं प्राप्य भजस्वमां इमं प्राप्य भजस्वमां सो इफ सच पीपल हु हैव हैड डिफिकल्ट एंटीसिडेंट्स एंड हु हैव बैटल टैबूज ऑफ स्टडीइंग द वेदा एंड ऑल दीस थिंग्स एंड स्टिल गेन दिस नॉलेज स्टिल गेन फ्रीडम आई मीन वी हैव हैड सो मेनी विमेन सेंट्स look at what meera bai had to go through look at what jana bai had to go through mukta bai look at what has she had to go through so many difficulties and uh, so but still they all were liberated beings they still managed to find gurus even in a very difficult uh, society and they still managed to overcome and give up their agnyanam so punah uh, then again kim what to talk of if one is born in a brahmana family in a male body no pratibandhas at all kim punah brahmanaah punyaah or one is a rajarshi rajanah sah rishayah rishayah cha so uh, born in a kingly family because the uh, two primary gradations of society in those times were brahma and kshatra those are the two primary the uh, cream of the cream on the top so then those two are mentioned here those two are mentioned in the upanishad also where kathu upanishad we uh, encountered it recently yasya brahma cha kshatram cha ubhe bhavata odanah for whom these gradations are just what rice and dal <laughs> one is rice one is dal and just the gradations are swallowed up so the gradations are not being reinscribed here they are being swallowed up and so here what to talk of when the whole world is at your feet here even when the the the, the most uh, difficultly uh, the people encountering the most difficulties in the form of taboos etc have succeeded what to talk of people for in front of whom the vedas are have been rolled out as a carpet all they have to do is follow the road that's all so then uh, or one is a rajarshi one is a rajarshi and then uh, uh, scholarly what um, uh, kingly and also Uh, born in a kingly royal family but scholarly and then all of them can gain me what to talk about what to talk about them nothing to talk about them ityarthah then then there is a kind of a advice to arjuna go ahead and then experience this loka what is this loka read the second line you will find out what this loka is ah anityam <laughs> means permanent correct no okay so anityam means fleeting and then don't forget the hidden a in the next word asukham don't say anityam but sukham anityam asukham prapya go after it no problem but then what you will come back to me choose me at the end after experiencing all this choose me bhajasva ma so bhajasva means choose me worship to choose to come to me after going around everything choose to come to me 
and, and the last verse is perhaps the most important verse in the whole chapter, very beautiful, and it is also uh, repeated at, uh, towards the end of the next chapter as well. Manmana bhava mad bhaktaha Manmana bhava mad bhaktaha Madhya ji maam namaskuru Madhya ji maam namaskuru Maame vaishya si yuktvaivam Maame vaishya si yuktvaivam Atmanam mad paraganaha So we have to add this bhava after every word in the in the uh, after every word beginning with ma in the first line. So manmana bhava we'll see madhyaji bhava and yeah yeah mad bhakto bhava madhyaji bhava these three we have to add this multiply bhava into three okay instead of one. So then we'll see mat mana. Man manaha, mat manaha means ones whose, the one whose mind is totally absorbed where? Unto me, is totally absorbed in me. We'll just see the translation first. Mat bhakto bhava, be the one who is devoted to me. Madhyaji bhava. In every yajna, may I, that you do, yaji means the worshipper. In every worship, in every yajna that I do, may I be the recipient. And may you be aware of me being the ultimate recipient of every yajna, no matter what deva or devatas you decide to invoke. You may say this is for Ganapati, but still, who does it come to? Me, which is Ishvara. What is Ganapati? A uh, Ishvara, a, 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 an iteration of Ishvara with a particular form and a function. Here, Ishvara, we are talking of from the standpoint of uh, not any form function, but that, that principle because of which that Atma Tattva, Ishvara Tattva, because of which everything becomes Ishvara. Ishvara is everything without being anything in particular. So know that every worship is going to me. Madhyaji maam namaskuru. And then what will happen? Maameva eshyasi. You will gain me alone. How? Evam yuktva. Yuktva evam yuktva evam. Evam yuktva. Thus endowed, thus equipped with everything that was said in the first line. Maameva eshyasi. Who is this maam? Atmanam. The atva. Myself is what? You. You will gain me as yourself. You will gain me as nothing other than yourself. Atmanam. And who is this? Matparayanaha. And this Matparayanaha also we have to add Bhava. Matparayano Bhava. And all this Bhava Bhava we have to add. Okay. So here is the uh, here is the understanding here. So, it is, a, it is an important verse because it talks about, it, it unfolds the nature of Bhagavan in a very, very beautiful way, in a way that is uh, um, easy to understand if the, um, if the whatever has gone, on, gone before in the ninth chapter has been understood, this will not be difficult. Because the Swarupa of Bhagavan as non-separate from oneself is what one needs to know. And so here, Manmana Bhava means Matmanaha Bhava. Let your mind be imbued with my awareness, with awareness of me. How is that possible? Okay, for a while I can think of God. First thought, God. Second thought, God. Third thought, God. Fourth thought, Oh God, <laughs> so, oh God, I forgot to do this. This is what will happen. Okay, OMG. And then, this is, this is why in, in uh, many times one feels guilty. There is guilt, like I'm not thinking of God enough. I want to think of God, but I don't know how to think of God because after a few thoughts of God, it appears to be odd. You know, the G goes away. <laughs> 
just becomes us. That is because we make the mistake of thinking God is an object enclosed by a thought. I can think of glasses, <laughs> glasses, glasses. And then if I think of glasses, this glass makeup, no, 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 not you, glasses. <laughs> I can go back to it because it's an object enclosed by a thought. But here, God is not an object enclosed by a thought. So therefore, it is virtually impossible to uh, go with the uh, injunction. What is that? Vidhi. Vidhi in Sanskrit means injunction. It is virtually impossible to go with the injunction, think of God. Are, how can I think of God? What will I think of? Okay, God. What thought comes to mind? Nothing. Or maybe some Ishta Devata comes to mind. And we know better. Ishta Devata is God, but God is not Ishta Devata. This we know now after studying the ninth chapter. Okay, Ishta Devata. That's why in meditation, unless we are doing Manasa Puja, we are told not to think of any form. Because every form is his, her form. Which form are you going to think of? And if you think of a particular form, you are stuck with that form. You are not thinking of Bhagavan. What are you thinking of? That particular form. So therefore, it is not possible to think of the formless. It is just not possible. Then how do we go with this injunction? Man mana bhava. Because we, we connect to the awareness. And what is that awareness? Sakshi bhava. That awareness is sakshita. So I am aware. I am aware of what? Myself. I am aware of so many bodies in the room. I am aware of the lights, the fans moving, some unmoving. I am aware of the windows, the doors, the curtains, desks, chairs, microphone. I am aware of this body. I am aware of other bodies. That is awareness. So that awareness is myself alone. I am, uh, I am awareness itself. That awareness, does it have a form? No. It, it takes on the form of whatever object I am aware of. If I am aware of crystal, oh, here it is. if I am aware of crystal, right now what is it? Crystal awareness. Then flower awareness, pot awareness, thought awareness. But what am I? None of them. What am I? Awareness. So, the more I am aware that I am awareness itself, this is what is talked about by Man Mana Bhava. That awareness is Aham Ishvara. Because of the presence of that awareness as Chit or Jnanam, this Mahavakya is possible. Because this awareness is sentient and because this awareness is I, this Mahavakya is, is possible. Other, any Mahavakya works. So, I am not an object of awareness and neither is Bhagavan an object of awareness. What am I? Awareness itself. And so therefore, this awareness so this awareness, for the, the same awareness, like for example, we have shirt. Shirt cannot exist without fabric, correct? And then fabric, then if you look at the truth of the fabric, we have what? Uh, thread, yarn. The truth of the yarn, what do we have? Fibers, molecules, so many things. Then cotton, cotton bush, cotton tree, cotton seed. Like this, it keeps on going. The cause keeps on changing and the effect becomes the cause in one instance and the, it becomes the effect in another, seen from another angle. But who, what about the one who is the seer of both the cause and the effect? The seer of both the cause and the effect, necessarily that means I am neither cause nor the effect. If I am cause, then I am stuck with being the cause. I am neither cause nor effect. I'm just that awareness because of which everything simply is, 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 aham, is, that is, uh, uh, resolves into I.
the S is silent in is. If the S goes away in is, what is left? I. That's all it is. First is is expanded to Ishvara. Whatever is is Ishvara. And that is is now I. Manmana bhava. Madbhakto bhava. Madbhakto bhava means that if, if I live in Ishvara awareness all the time, then I don't see anybody as separate from me. Everybody is myself alone. Everybody is one with me. And so that is what is Madbhakto Bhava. Madhyaji. Madhyaji means know that any, any temple you go to, in front of any form of Bhagavan you stand, what are you standing in front of? You are standing in front of the nameless, formless one, which is non-separate from you, present as the ever-present, never-absent, ne negator of everything except itself, awareness. Maam Namaskuru. Maam Namaskuru means uh, uh, until you know this, and even afterwards, just surrender to me. Surrender to me, meaning what? Surrender to this knowledge. Maam Namaskuru, Adi Shankara says, uh, uh, the uh, Guru Mukhat Praptam, that which is gained from the mouth of the Guru, to that knowledge, do Namaskara. Worship that knowledge, which reveals the oneness of the, of the Guru and the Shishya, and the oneness of the, what? The um, Jagat, Jiva, and Ishwar. So Jeeveshwara Aikya, that knowledge which gives, do namaskara, do a big salute to that. Then uh, Matparayanaha, Matparayanaha means whose para, uh, param uh, ma, uh, ahameva param ayanam yasya Matparayanaha means I am the ultimate goal for whom that one, that person is known as Matparayanaha. I means Ishvara here, Moksha. Moksha is the ultimate goal, Moksha, knowing oneself as, as Ishvara, is the ultimate goal for whom? That is Matparayana. So why should I do this? If Arjuna asks, then Mameva Eshyasi, you will gain me. Oh, will you come with Shankha and Chakra? Or will you come with yellow clothes, uh, uh, sporting a peacock feather? And then what else? And some flutes. Fruit. No, no, no. Mameva Eshyasi. You will gain me alone. How will you gain me? Atmanam in the form of yourself. Beautiful. And Adi Shankara here waxes eloquent on how that Ishvara is oh, non separate from Atma, and that's the only way to gain it. Any other gain is temporary and even delusion, delusional. Om Tat Sat Om Tat Sat Iti Shreemad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Iti Shreemad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastre Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastre Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Shri Krishna Arjuna Samvade Raja Vidya Raja Guhya Raja Vidya Raja Guhya Yogo Nama Yogo Nama Navamo Adhyayaha Navamo Adhyayaha Om Athadashamo Adhyayaha Om Athadashamo Adhyayaha Introducing the 10th chapter, Adi Shankara says, admits that there are a lot of repetitions. We hear many repetitions and this he means in two ways. In two ways there are repetitions. The first repetition uh, is basically, this is called, the 10th chapter is called Vibhuti Yoga, enlisting the glories of the Lord. And how many glories are there? Countless, Countless glories, infinite number of, glo number of glories. You can't count. Much less put it in the, in the scope of one chapter of uh, 40 some verses, 44 verses. Can't do that really. And so therefore what? So therefore, um, there are many repetitions. And then also whatever has gone earlier, the vibhuti has already been mentioned, but in a general way. And here, 
the specific way it is being mentioned. Adi Shankara concedes that giving the Sangati from the 9th to the 10th chapter. He says yes. If anybody else also sees this, they are correct that there will be repetition. But he says, but still it is both enjoyable and justified. Why is it justified? Because uh, the uh, chapters 7 to 12, as we saw, has have a direct difference from chapters 1 to 6. Chapters 1 to 6 all about the status of the jiva. The jiva is like, you know, uh, sad, so how to come out of the sadness, Arjuna was told in the second chapter. Karma Yoga was given, Brahma Vidya was given, and then in the third chapter, this Karma Yoga was elaborated, what to do, how to do this, how to be in a state of equanimity with regard to the results of action was given in, in chapter 3. In chapter 4, that the Jiva is Jiva's nature is free of akartritvam and abhoktritvam, free of being karta and bhokta was also told. And in the fifth chapter, how to gain space from that and, uh, and, and not go after the sense objects all the time, what is the, uh, what is the secret to that was also told. A little bit about renunciation was talked about, how to train the mind was talked about in the sixth chapter. Then. We come to Tatpada, completely different scope and, uh, and uh, uh, analysis of the nature of Ishvara. First, the nature of Ishvara as from whom the, uh, the whole world has come, by which the Jagat has been sustained, unto which the Jagat goes. This was the seventh chapter. Seventh chapter also the glories of the Lord were talked about. Ninth chapter also the glories of the Lord have been talked about. Eighth chapter also the glories have been talked about. But here in the seventh to the ninth chapter we have seen the uh, we have seen the nature of Bhagavan from the standpoint of the Swarupa Lakshana and from the standpoint of Tatastha Lakshana. Yes. Tatastha Lakshana Kuro sitting on Devadatta's house. Remember that, okay? Yeah. So you don't need the crow after he flies away and goes and sits on another house. You don't think wherever the crow goes, there goes I. Okay? Yeah. That's a nice line for a poem, but that's not to be followed. So the crow is just a upalakshana. The crow does its job and goes away. And so to here we saw in the 7th and the ninth chapter, to a certain extent in the 8th also, of how the Lord has, has this glory of para and apara prakriti. So this prakriti, what is this? Maya shakti. How with the help of this imaginary kalpita maya shakti, the Lord creates, sustains and takes back the whole universe, resolves the whole universe unto himself. We saw that and then though that all is glory only. And then so what is the need for chapter 10? What is the need to list each glory one by one? Well, there are three, two or three very nice uh, reasons why we need to know the glories of the Lord one by one. First is we understand that we understand that there is a non-separation between the Lord and the Jagat. The Lord and the Jagat, which were, which are usually seen as two different and separate entities, are now going to be seen as what? One. Because the glories of the Lord are what? Nothing but the Jagat. The whole Jagat is going to be listed here. To this you can add also a few things. The whole Jagat is being listed here. All the things in the Jagat from Mount Meru to all the things, the Vedas, everything is being listed. So this is one reason. And the, we need to know the glories of the Lord. The second reason we need to know the glories of the Lord is because it, um, it, it uh, punctures the Ahankara. <laughs> the balloon of the Ahankara which thinks itself uh, in everybody, to be the karta bhokta, the indra and chandra of the whole universe. Without me, this will not happen. I am the best, east or west. I am the greatest. This is what one might feel because of ahankara. 
because of the ahamkara. The ahamkara, as we have seen in other contexts, is extremely sneaky. What does it do? It attacks when one is not looking. And then it will slowly say, well, you know, you, you have done this, you are great or whatever. There are two ways of tackling the ahamkara. Either you say, everything is me. Everything is me, me, me. So the balloon of the hankara becomes big, 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 big. You keep blowing into it, blowing into it. You claim all the glories as yours. Then what happens to the balloon? Burst. And then one has Sarvatma Bhava, is the result of this balloon bursting. This is one way. The other way is to say, it's not me, it's all you, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. And then also what happens? Goes. The ahankara goes. So here, it is all you, uh, uh, we say here, this is, this is one way to prepare the mind to understand Sarvatma Bhava. So therefore, introducing the second chapter, the Lord says that I am going to tell you another way in which your journey to moksha is going to become much, much easier. Let us chant. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Bhuya Eva Mahabaho Shrinume Paramam Vacha Yate Ham Priya Manaya Shami Hita Kamya Shami Hita Kamya Arjuna has been not asking a single question for a very, very long time. And what does he say now? So Bhagavan still continues because there is no question from him. Bhagavan continues. Shri Bhagavan Uvaja. What did Bhagavan say? Bhuyaha. Once again, O oh mighty armed one. Please listen to my words. Paramam vajaha. Usually translated as supreme words. No. <laughs> Not supreme. Paramam means Shreyas Karam. Shreyas Karam. Uh, you know, vajaha. Shrinu. Shreyas Karam Vak. My speech is, what does my speech do? Give you moksha. I just have to open my mouth. And what comes out is Brahma Vidya. And that is what you have to listen to. That's why it is Paramam Vacha. I am not interested in discussing the weather. Although I dare say, even if Bhagavan discussed the weather, it would be Moksha Karaka. So, this, this is what the truth of, of, of uh, the words uh, is. They are giving, giving you Moksha. Uh, why, why am I giving you these words? Yat te aham. Um, uh, for I am giving you this uh, Vakshyami uh, why am I giving you this Hitakamyaya keeping your welfare in my purview keeping your welfare front and center and why am I doing this for you because Priyamanaya te tubhyam because you are looking mighty pleased Arjuna please recall how Arjuna must have looked in the first chapter <laughs> so, all despondent and totally apathetic, poor Krishna must have not even felt like teaching. But then, after the second chapter, he, he, he was infused with a little more life and then out of that glazed look and, and half-dead look, he came alive. Third chapter, oh really? Oh, really? Oh, yes, I agree. More. And so he must have been nodding, he must have been alive, his face was radiant with uh, jignasa. And so that is the person who is Priyamana, who, who looks delightful. Why? In the basking in this knowledge, Arjuna, from the first chapter to the tenth chapter, there has been a huge change in you. Now you look delighted. You look delighted to be studying the Bhagavad Gita and, uh, and uh, studying these teachings. And so therefore, Vakshyami, keeping your Hita in view, I am going to tell you. 
and then what is he going to say i am going to tell you those aspects of myself which you can never know because even the so called celestials various uh, deities such as indra chandra all these varuna all these pe- people do not know name vidusura gana ha name vidusura gana ಭವನ್ನಮಹರ್ಷಯ ಭವನ್ನಮಹರ್ಷಯ ಅಹಮಾದಿರ್ಹಿ ದೇವಾಹರ್ಷೀಣಾಂಚಶ ಯೋ ಮಾಮಜಮನಾ not even these big big rishis seven rishis are there they are going to be pointed out na maharshaya and then why why do they not know aham adirhi devana because i, I perceive the devas devas are functionaries they all function because of me bhi bhishas mat batav pavate we hear this in the taitriya bhishat asmat from asmat brahmana bhishat vatah pavate even the wind blows as though out of fear of whom which presents that causeless cause i am so the suras the suraganaha the minions of devatas do not know me i perceive them and i perceive the maharshis and i perceive everything else in this universe and then therefore someone like you arjuna yah maam ajam anadin cha vetti the one who recognizes me as free of birth and free of end free of beginning and free of end then loka maheshwaram as the uh, as the natha of the whole world as the lord of the whole world who is, who is that person sah martyeshu among the mortals such a person is not deluded because they know my nature and knowing my nature sarva papaihi pramujyate knowing my nature means what as glories why should i know all these glories if one were to ask because the glories the 10th chapter is justified because the glories are the dress of ishva upadhita and then the mahavakya does it operate on the level of upadhi or not hmm? no we have to transcend the upadhi so the dress does not matter but if we know the dress then we know to transcend the dress uh, that is the whole idea if the mountains is the is what we are there somewhere else it was said the clouds the space is the veshti the dhoti of the lord is space the lord has wrapped space so then this way it is you know that, that's why it is called digambareshwara dig eva ambaram yasya the directions the quarters are the clothes of bhagavan so like this if we are able to understand what is this bhagavat upadhi the jeevas upadhi the jeeva knows what is jeevas upadhi complaints okay <laughs> from beginning to end complaints 
criticism of oneself, criticism of others, and pain, sorrow, fear, same old, same old, same old, insecurity, lack of trust, all this. Jiva's Upadhi. Ishvara's Upadhi is what? Infinite glory. Jiva's Upadhi, some glories may be there, but it is finite. Finite, uh, finite uh, reaches, finite abilities, finite glories, whereas infinite glories. But this is the dress of the Jiva, this is the dress of the Ishvara. So the 10th chapter shows us the Upadhi of Ishvara from the standpoint of glories so that we may enjoy them, one, and then knowing that to be just the garb, the Upadhi, we see through that. We develop X-ray vision and see through that to see that what I am looking at is really myself alone. What I am looking at is not an object but the truth of myself alone. Because we have done the same thing in chapters 1 to 6. One to six. What did we do? We rid the jiva of the jivik upadhis of various uh, finitude, limitations, etc. And we came to the understanding that the jiva is nothing but consciousness. That's how the sixth chapter ended on the note of meditation. Dhyana yoga. Stay in the mind where? In this awareness. This awareness alone is I. And the same thing we have to do on this side of the equation, Ishvara's side. And this awareness is, uh, that Ishvara is uh, awareness wearing a beautiful dress of mountains, rivers, waterfalls and all the glories of all knowledge, etc. All knowledge, all Shakti uh, are the dress of Ishvara. So this is the this is why we need to know the glories because only after understanding Ishvara from the standpoint of Upadhi we can let go of that Upadhi cognitively. So usually when we think about Ishvara's Upadhi, what do we see? We see that it is, we can say it is mountains, it is this, it is that, it is rain, it is it is waterfalls, it is clouds, it is rainbows. <coughs> But then we seldom think of Ishvara's Upadhi being our own buddhi. Our own buddhi is Ishvara's dress. Why? Because it has come from Ishvara. Our own buddhi is Ishvara's dress. The Samashti buddhi is Ishvara's dress. And so here, the next two verses, very beautiful, let us chant. Buddhir Jnanamasam Moha Satyam the Mashamaha Shama Satyam the Mashamaha So come, do come, Babo Baba. So come, do come, Babo Baba. Payanja, Payame Sorry, but that's me. 
so i i always look at the 10th chapter as bhagavan's bhagavan as lawyer attorney reclaiming the intellectual copyright violations whatever is there all the intellectual copyright violation each jeeva thinking i am i am blessed with a wonderful voice i am a great dancer thinks the other i am a wonderful cook and then not to mention i have the great trust vedantin that is also there it is also there bhagavan in the 10th chapter taps on the shoulder and say ah uh-uh, ah not you give it back to me it's me i'm just letting you have it and enjoy it that doesn't make it you you know if you're living in a rented house you can't trash it you know, it's not your house <laughs> in fact sometimes you have to even ask the landlord to even put a nail on the on the wall you have to get the permission of the landlord you can't just suddenly do whatever you want so here everything is rented you know for the jeeva rented body body is what bhagavan how can you think it's yours it's not yours at all mind is what bhagavan senses bhagavan ability to do bhagavan ability to uh, to receive something bhagavan कर्तृत्वं भगवान् भोक्तृत्वं भगवान् एवरीथिंग इज भगवान् ओ इंस्टेड ऑफ आस्किंग द क्वेश्चन हु एम आई नाउ आई शुड से वेर एम आई सो ऑल भगवान् सो वन द द इंडिविजुअल अहंकार गेट्स गेट्स कंप्लीटली टोटली फ्लडेड बाय द समष्टि उपाधि ऑफ ईश्वरा दैट इज द परपोर्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर more we'll see when tomorrow uh, day after tomorrow after the weekend om purnam tat purnam idam purna purnam tatchate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om